Hello, AP Bio students. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, a very important topic in molecular biology, a very essential technique, um, that is gel electrophoresis. If you work with DNA at all, you will have to perform gel electrophoresis, and this video will cover a basic understanding of the principle and one of its applications in the lab. So let's get started. First, we need to consider how to actually make a gel for gel electrophoresis. The gel that is used is called an agarose gel. Agarose comes as a powder. Uh, essentially, it is, a, is extracted from seaweed. So we'll put that powder into a flask along with some buffer. And what we do from there is boil it. So you can put this in the microwave or on a hot plate. And once it gets to boiling, you essentially have a uh, molten, very hot gel that can then go into a mold and will cool and, and eventually become this shape here. So this is the gel that we're going to work with. It hardens into this shape. Okay. Uh, looking at the gel, there are a couple aspects that I want to consider. So it'll have this shape, and essentially what we've done is we've created these little holes in the top of the, of the gel that uh, will serve as what we call wells. This is where we're going to load our DNA sample. Okay, so these wells create lanes, and so oftentimes scientists will refer to the lanes from left to right, lane one, lane two, lane three. But what's really important here is this uh, porous nature. So the gel from a molecular standpoint is porous. Okay, that will be an important concept to consider here in a little bit when we talk about how DNA runs down the gel. Okay. To really understand how gel electrophoresis works, though, you have to understand the nature of the structure of DNA and how it behaves. So remember, DNA is composed of nucleotide monomers, and each monomer contains a deoxyribose sugar, as well as a phosphate and a nitrogenous base. So you can see a nucleotide right here. You have your sugar, you have your phosphate, and in this case, an adenine and nitrogenous base. <clears throat> and then, you know, each of these monomers makes up the DNA polymer. All of this, by the way, goes back to Big Idea 3. So if you want to review that, go back to Big Idea 3. But of particular importance for gel electrophoresis is the phosphate group. So I've shown you a phosphate group here. So each one of these phosphates here, in actuality, looks like this. Uh, and what you want to consider is that the functional group for a phosphate functional group has an overall negative charge. So because of the presence of all these phosphates in both strands of the double helix, overall DNA has a negative charge. Okay, so that's really important to consider, as you will see in a moment. Uh, once the gel has cooled and polymerized, you're ready to, to perform gel electrophoresis. So the first thing you'll do is you'll cover your gel with buffer, and then you'll load your samples into the wells, shown here. Okay. The gel is then subjected to a current, which is achieved by placing an anode at one end and a cathode at the other end. So you load your samples on the negative end here, the cathode end, uh, and then you place the anode at the other end. So basically what you're doing is you're setting up a current to run through your agarose gel. Ask yourself really quickly why we're doing this. Why would hooking up a power source with the end that you load your samples being negative and the other end being positive? Okay, It's a really important question. So when we start the current and the DNA begins to move, it migrates towards the positive end down here. So you're going to see your DNA start to migrate here. You can see that in this picture here. Uh, essentially, because DNA is negatively charged, it will run towards the positive end of the, of the current. So you're going to get your DNA separated as it moves towards the positive side. That's a really important concept here for gel electrophoresis. Uh, the fragments of DNA, as they begin to migrate towards the positive end, we call them bands. Okay, So all of these little blue lines represent fragments of DNA that we call bands. And they resolve or separate based on size. So we start to see the different size bands as they migrate towards the positive side. The reason they separate by size is going back to that porous nature of the agarose gel. Okay, Large bands get caught up in the 
porous molecular structure. Um, so it takes them longer to get to the positive side. So overall, when you look at a gel, the larger bands are at, top, at the top, uh, whereas the smaller bands can snake through the porous nature of the gel, and the smallest of all bands will be down at the bottom here. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the applications for gel electrophoresis um, here. So this is an example of um, a restriction enzyme digest being run onto an agarose gel and being subjected to gel electrophoresis. Okay, so uh, essentially keep in mind that it's going to help us to see what the size of the fragments of this digest are. So the first thing a scientist would have to do is decide on a marker to run with her samples. Uh, so a marker will give you a size comparison so you know how big the fragments in your bands are. So let's go ahead and give us a marker here to compare our samples to. Just a quick reminder, the marker, um, it, the marker is being run uh, with the samples. So I'm, I'm drawing it here to show you essentially you know, the sizes, and this is for academic purposes. So you would run the marker sample one and sample two all together, but I'm going to go ahead and put the marker up there so that you guys can use this um, as an example and predict the size um, of the bands that you'll see in lane two and three here, okay? So what are the predictions for these particular digests? So over here I have a, a single digest. So if you have a linear piece of DNA, it's 100 KB in length, and you have a restriction enzyme site right here, you're going to get a 25 KB and a 75 KB fragment. Well, let's take a comparison of, of our marker our marker says that the 75 KB band is here and the, set, and the 25 KB band is here. So in lane two, for a sample digest one, you would predict a band right here and a band right here on this agarose gel. Let's take a look at digest number two. Here we're digesting circular DNA. Uh, what is your prediction for where the bands will run on this particular digest? Well, if you cut with restriction enzyme here at site A, and you cut with restriction enzyme B here at site B, you're going to get two fragments. You're going to get this 25 KB fragment, and you're going to get this 75 KB fragment. So the results are going to be the same. You'll get a 75 KB fragment here, and a 25 KB fragment here. So they'll run about the same on the respective gels. Okay, so that will conclude it for this uh, brief tutorial on gel electrophoresis. I hope it helps you understand the process better. I hope you're able to start making connections between restriction enzyme digest and gel electrophoresis. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.